Hello there, so my name's Angus Grant. I'm 51 years old and um, about two years ago, well over two years ago, I was um, diagnosed with a grade three oligodendroglioma. I collapsed in a, rest in a restaurant in Shrewsbury and they, um, and it was a seizure. So they, they, they then took me to Telford Hospital um, and they did loads of t tests and I, I was diagnosed with what they then thought was a grade two tumour, not a grade three tumour. Um, and so from there, I was referred to um, Stoke, um, which was when I started the process of uh, um, consultation for a craniotomy. Well, I mean, the whole service was very helpful from beginning to end, really. Um, once I knew what the process was, I mean, it's a bit, um, you know, you, you were going through quite a lot of anxiety at the time because you've just found out you've got a brain tumour and, you know, and, and they're going through what the process will be. Um, so it started off by, um, I met Gemma Wall, Dr. Gemma Wall, who was just fantastic. Um, and we started talking about um, what was going to happen with the craniotomy. And I met um, the surgeon. Um, and they asked whether or not I would um, be prepared to have an awake craniotomy. And I had no problem with that, actually. You know, I mean, most of us have seen the videos on YouTube of people playing guitars while they're in the, the awake part of their craniotomy. So um, whilst I was a little bit anxious, I didn't really have a problem in any way whatsoever. Um, Gemma was very good in making sure that she I understood exactly what the process would be. Well, everything went well. I mean, I, I, for me, I think it's important to remember that whilst I had this, ANHS was in the grip of the COVID pandemic. Um, and um, so I was seen very quickly in terms of the craniotomy. All the consultations um, with my surgeon and also with Gemma were, um, you know, were very thorough. They were, um, you know, I was able to ask questions when I wanted to. I was able, they were very good at explaining um, what was going to happen in terms of um, the after effects of the operation and all that kind of thing. And, and I was also able to link it to the treatment that I would get after the craniotomy, which was all the radiotherapy and chemotherapy as well. So I think, you know, when you're in that situation where you're already quite anxious because it's not news you expect to get when you're, you know, age 49, um, I was able to categorise it all, put it into various boxes on the shelf and just utilise that in terms of the process of getting better. Because I knew I had a year and a half of you know, quite serious medical intervention coming up. And so I think in that respect, that was what helped me the most. Um, you know, it was laid down very, very clearly. Gemma made sure that she was always accessible. So I could, I knew I could phone her whenever I wanted to. Um, so yeah, I think given that where the NHS was in terms of struggling with the pandemic and also um, trying to help people like me, I thought they did it admirably well and I was yeah I was um, it was really reduced any kind of anxiety I could have possibly had. We did have some problems with um, transferring from hospitals so I was initially because I uh, had a seizure and collapsed I smashed my entire shoulder up it's just metal now um, and they at Telford they weren't happy to operate because there were no neuro sort of specialists uh, in the theatre so I had to wait to get a bed at Stoke and that took about two weeks so that was that was quite problematic to be honest um, everyone was wonderful all the frontline workers were just fantastic but there was this almost this, this bureaucratic machine which was quite difficult to uh, to to um, to get moving um, my husband was great he was you know he he definitely kept kept badgering people. Eventually I got a bed in Stoke, they operated on my shoulder, um, I came home and then I think it was about a week and a half later I had my craniotomy but they had to do the shoulder before the craniotomy and there was just this yeah quite a big quite a big long wait. So after the craniotomy I then had to have radiotherapy which um, I think was for six weeks and then I had to have chemotherapy, I had PCV chemotherapy and that was um, in six week cycles. So that was quite long. So the whole chemotherapy was, was quite long. I managed that quite well. Um, in between, I went back to work for a bit in between radio and chemo before the chemo effects really started to um, have an effect. And then they did have an effect. After about the third cycle, they started to have quite a big effect. So I took time off work again. 
and then I went back to work in November 2021. I've been full time back to work since then. Um, and fingers crossed, there's been no progression with the tumour. So that's the best news I could I could want. I'm perfectly happy getting on with it. You know, it's not ideal news, but you know, it's news and I deal with it. And yeah, I do okay. Well, thanks. You know, seriously, I mean, you know, I was there in using a service, a really important service during a pandemic. And I thought that overall everything was done absolutely brilliantly. If I want to say anything to the execs, it's give us somewhere where if we've got a complaint, we know where to complain to because it's such a massive machine that is behind these frontline workers. And also trying to relate between two health authorities, between Telford and Stoke, was a nightmare. It's okay for me. I'm young-ish and, you know, um, my husband is young and intelligent. I would be very worried if it was somebody old who didn't know where to go. Where to go, you know, in terms of trying to find an answer to something. And I found that was, was difficult. You know, um, I was lucky. I had a very clever husband who was fighting my case and saying, where is this bloody hospital bed that you've been promising for the last two weeks? But I think other people might struggle with that.